Hello Cancer, Cancer Rising and Cancer Moon people, this is your monthly astrological horoscope for May 2017. And a quick reminder for all you folks out there, remember that this monthly horoscope is talking about the big, long-standing energies of the month, and they certainly go on for longer than just a day. And if you're interested in more short-term angles, you can always check out the astrology on the weekly horoscopes. The first half of those videos is dedicated exclusively to astro astrology, so even if astrology is your only squeeze, there is something there for you. And of course, if you ever want to get a session with me, you can always go to my website, integrativemysticism.com. So what is going on with the astrology of May? Well, Cancer May is actually... Uh, fairly calm, fairly easy month because we don't have a lot of big shifts to cover. In fact, a lot of planets are sort of staying nice and cozy in certain signs and certain energies and areas, making for a month without all of the huge bangs, twists, and turns that we've seen in April and March. Um, in particular, we've got Venus uh, remaining in Aries, direct and out of her shadow period, fresh as a daisy. <laughs> in your 10th house of career all month. And whenever Venus is in a financial sector, such as house 10 or house two, but in your case, house 10, we are talking about a theme of easy upgrades, easy money, easy promotions, easy favors, little gifts coming your way because Venus makes us popular. Venus gives us all kinds of, you know, the good attention that we want to have. If you have any special favors to ask, any, you know, special requests to make, you'd like to appeal or campaign for a way to kind of get yourself bigger and better at the office, this is the time to do it. Special requests as far as trips, as far as holiday time, or maybe even uh, special assignments should go over without much of a fuss and little to no haggling or bargaining to be heard of. In fact, with Venus coming into your 10th house and staying there this whole month, you may be noticing that, again, work and money comes easier to you um, and you may not necessarily know what to do with that kind of feeling. You know, it, sometimes people just give us more money for doing the same old thing or even for doing easy jobs. In fact, that is kind of the mainstay theme and that there could be especially nice for those of you who are looking for new work because, again, you are getting more popular during this time. It's going to be easier for you to stick out where you need to make the good impressions. We've also got Mars staying the entirety of the month in Gemini in your 12th house of your past, your privacy, and your hidden zone. And it's talking about getting closer to people for what's underneath the surface. Mars is the planet of action, passion, and energy. So when it goes into our 12th house, it tends to quiet down. And all that is passion, all that is, you know, what we're, we're, what we're really, you know, jazzed about, or what's really meaningful to us or meaningful to others, is all going to be found underneath the surface. And so there's a big lesson in that this month about making sure that we don't judge everything by ex external. You know, nowadays we live in a world that has a bit of a branding problem. Everything's branded by what you wear, how you speak, what you say, what category or label can we place you in because people are desperate for certainty and they have a tendency to over-categorize and over-label. Be careful because with Mars in the 12th house, you're going to be noticing you're making a lot more friends from completely different cultures that don't look anything like what you normally hang out with, who you normally spend time with, and you may be finding out that underneath we all have, you know, uh, maybe similar childhoods, similar backgrounds, sim similar beliefs, similar passions, codes of ethics. It just isn't showing up on the outside in a way that is predictable or categorizable. And that might be something to pay attention to this month because with Mars in the 12th house, there's a way to kind of build on your, your social support system if we can get away from the external this month. And with Mars in the 12th, you may be even noticing that people who have even hidden talents or hidden uh, passions for, you know, little indulgences the same that you have are going to also be hitting you up, possibly even romantically. On the third of the month, we've got Mercury turning direct after his, rec after his retrograde in April. Mercury turns direct on the third in your 10th house of career, where he will be catching up for lost time all the way up until the 15th of the month. When Mercury is direct in our 10th house of career, we can expect a lot of developments to move much more quickly. What has stalled in the last two months? We need to ask ourselves, you know, what has been sort of hanging in the air? What has been tentative? What is still up for grabs? Or what has yet to actually clear? 
you know, whether it's a submission, an application, maybe we're in a situation where, you know, that Mercury retrograde was bringing a lot of old stuff back to the surface, old opportunities, and now with Mercury direct, how are we going to quickly catch up for lost time as if we never passed it up or missed out on it before? In fact, with Mercury in the 10th house of communications, you can expect that a lot of things that you initiate start to pick up speed much more quickly during this time. You may turn in an application for a job and find out that all of a sudden you can start a week after you turned in that application. You may find out that interview processes are expedited, and a lot of things are just happening a little bit more quickly for you than, you know, is typical. On the 10th of the month, we've got a full moon in Scorpio in your fifth house of love, romance, pleasure, and your relationships with your children. And this can be an interesting moon because it's sort of raising the emotions in this area. This could be a great opportunity for those of you who are looking to reconnect or connect with your children or to bury the hatchet on some kind of long-standing issue with a child, or maybe even with a parent, you being the child in this relationship. Or this could even be an opportunity to bury the hatchet with a lover about an outstanding issue that may be expired. You know, sometimes people are still dealing with emotions about a, about a circumstance that has come and gone, but he or she just cannot let it go. It's like an illness. We have a way to kind of get rid of that within the relationship to clear it and, you know, and actually heal it so that we all move on together, not one after one another. For those of you who are single and looking, this is the moon you want to have, because when we have a full moon in the fifth house, it can bring an opportunity to end the cycle of singledom. However, what, it need, what needs to be understood is that, again, emotions are a little bit high, so be careful not to let the whirlwind romance or the, the I-word infatuation control the situation, okay? And infatuation is not a dirty word. It's perfectly natural. On the 15th of the month, we do have Mercury moving into Taurus, into your 11th house of friendships and social networking, making for a much more um, extroverted second half of the month. We've got, uh, with, with this angle essentially, with Mercury especially here, uh, from the 15th to the 31st, you're going to be noticing yourself being a lot more, people being more inclusive with you. People calling on you a lot more, and more time to reconnect and get more, you know, re recreational activity in with friends. Mercury can also show up where friends and people, you know, when we talk about friends, we're just talking about, you know, just regular people, you know, maybe actually showing up to perform services or offer their services to you and to go out and actually do a lot of work for you, do a lot of legwork on your behalf, even though you might not necessarily think that this person has an interest, this person never cared, this person was qualified. Turns out Mercury actually is speeding up opportunities through these people. You're going to have crowds of assistants coming around you. And it may be wise to know when to enlist the help of another instead of just trying to do something all on our own. Sometimes, you know, if you want a job done right, you leave it up to somebody who wants to do it for you, you know, and not necessarily all up to yourself because they may be able to get to it faster. On the 20th of the month, we've got the sun moving into Gemini, into your 12th house, your privacy, your hidden zone, again, the energy of your past. And it's also going to be followed up almost immediately on the 25th with a new moon in this area. And whenever we have the sun and a new moon in our 12th house, it tends to focus a bit more on the spiritual, on the psychological. Talking about cleansing, talk about healing, talk about raising our energy, raising our focus, and doing some of that deep inner work. But you may not be doing it alone. You may be finding yourself drawn into a spiritual community or to a stronger, deeper spiritual practice than what you have been working on so far. If you are not actively working on the spiritual, uh, then you may actually find some kind of stimulus <laughs> that comes to you during this time. Sometimes we have to have that freaky wake-up call because of that bump in the night, or maybe, you know, some kind of illuminating or elucidating experience that actually does trigger us into taking things just a bit more seriously than we have. A new moon in the 12th house can also indicate a venue being presented to you in secret or a secret opportunity that is actually kind of being put forward for you. Now you're supposed to keep it hush-hush in the beginning, because it's the 12th house, this may be coming through somebody, or perhaps even an agency in your past, or an organization in your past, calling you back for something very, very important. But we may have that opportunity arise at the very end of May, or even the first week of June, but it's still important to know. So that is your horoscope, Cancer. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. You know I appreciate it. And of course, if you ever want to get a session, you can always follow the links below or go to integrativemysticism.com.